today, the House Republicans and Republicans in general are crowing that they got to depose Hunter Biden behind closed doors. From all accounts, they got little to nothing. There's no consequence to lying anymore under oath. Judges don't enforce it. And if it was to be enforced, it would have to be enforced by the Gestapo of a Biden Justice Department. What the Republicans are doing is a dog and pony show, just intending to weaken Joe Biden going into the 2024 elections, assuming he doesn't die beforehand of his own natural health problems, or if he's removed by the Democrats, which is becoming increasingly, increasingly likely, given the fact that he's a brain dead moron and can barely remember his own name. And now it's confirmed by a special counsel report. So this is all a game. The Republicans have no intention of impeaching him. They have no intention of referring it to the so-called Justice Department, the Gestapo of a Biden Justice Department, because nothing will happen. And all it is, is taking up time and space. Whereas your Freedom Watch indicted Biden. We tried him, we convicted him, and we had him sentenced to 20 years for bribery from communist China, Ukraine, and Russia. Now it behooves someone in the law enforcement community to arrest him, the establishment, and to put him away where the sun don't shine so he can rot for the rest of his life in prison, which is where he belongs. And also today we find out that the Supreme Court is taking up the issue of immunity that Trump is claiming with regard to the January 6th prosecution and possibly the document prosecution in Florida. Well, this is meant for delay. Whatever the Supreme Court rules, and I'll tell you something, one can only guess what is going to happen. I think some of the conservatives will buckle. Uh, they're not really conservatives of all John Roberts, and they'll find that Trump has no immunity. And that's probably the right decision, because you know what? As I've said before, Trump did nothing wrong on January 6th. He sent people to protest. He said, be peaceful. He even suggested that the National Guard should be there just in case to Nancy Pelosi. He was set up, you know, by the powers to be in the intelligence communities, the deep state. He didn't commit any crime. So what does he need immunity for? The president should not be immune any more than any government official or federal judge should be immune. To do that would be giving a license, a license to commit crimes. And that cannot be permitted. So I'm not sympathetic of his argument, but he's using it to try to delay things past the election. And in fact, it may turn out that he gets bitten by it because with the Supreme Court now saying it's going to issue a decision by June, he could be tried in the fall, right in the middle of the electoral season. This has been a problem of the president. He doesn't have the best and brightest as lawyers. In the beginning, he used to hire anybody he saw on Fox News. That was the lawyer he hired. I think Alina Habit did a good job. They beat her, her up on the left, but he has very few lawyers that will stick their neck out for him. And he has paid the price with television lawyers from day one. Now we have the issue of open borders. We see the poor co-ed that was killed in Georgia at the University of Georgia. He, she is now becoming sadly the poster woman for what's going on with, regarding, with regard to allowing criminals run across our Southern border. The Democrats are playing the game. Oh, it's just one murder, no big deal. We don't really care. Well, why should they care? They don't care when you kill hundreds of millions of babies at abortion mills. It's just one more. And in fact, many of them advocate abortion after birth. And that's clear in any event, right up to birth. The Democrat Party and the left has little to no regard for life unless it's their own. They love themselves. They want to protect themselves. If you walk down the streets of California or Washington, D.C. or whatever, You'll see them wearing masks to this day, because God forbid anything happens to me. I'm so precious. I must uh, preserve my, uh, my health at the expense of everyone else, including kids that had to wear masks going to school. And then, of course, the left has turned on Israel, particularly members of the Marxian Jewish left, people who aren't Jews themselves. I watched a, a telecast by John Stewart the other day absolutely despicable, absolutely disgusting, mocking Israel, mocking Judaism, mocking Jesus Christ. This guy is a low-class POS, excuse the French. You know, one time I met him, I met him the first time on the set of Politically Incorrect. He was sitting to my right. I didn't know who he was. He was just coming up. And I said facetiously, of course, I knew to some extent, I said, who are you? And he says, oh, I'm just some Jewish guy. Well, you know what? He's no Jewish guy. This guy is anti-Jewish. He's not a Jew. 
And if he was, he would not have said the disgusting things that he said about Israel and uh, what's going on there in, in, in the Gaza Strip right now. Israel did not ask for 1,200 Israelis to have their heads chopped off and or be made hostages, including little babies. They have not asked for all of the harm that has been bestowed upon them for the last many 70 years since their founding. The UN had created through partition a state for the so-called Palestinians and for uh, the Israelis. Now, not all Palestinians are bad. They're good Palestinians, of course, but Hamas is not part of that. And they were not satisfied in 1948 with having half of Palestine. And they declared war on Israel and Israel won. And just like we won with the Indians, okay? And, and we acquired the United States. And it's been an effort ever since to annihilate the state of Israel to Jewish people, and of course, by extension, Christians. And again, I'm not criticizing good Palestinians because there are many of them, but Hamas is not part of that. And for John Stewart and others to be so disrespectful and so flippant and think that he's funny, frankly, the guy's never been funny, I frankly found disgusting. I'm going to see if I can put that uh, appearance up and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is part of the Marxian Jewish left. They are not Jews at all. Generally, they're atheists. And I'm concerned, you know, as a Jewish Christian, that people think that this is exemplary of the Jewish people. It's not. But the Jewish people need to condemn them. And we need to relegate them, frankly, peacefully and legally to the ash heap of history where they belong. I'll be back tomorrow with another special podcast. Until then, remember, the Father and Son, yes, the Father and Son, will help us if we help ourselves. Thank you for listening to me. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. Contribute to our cause with tax-deductible contributions. We are your real Justice Department, not the Gestapo run by the Biden regime, and certainly not the clowns on Capitol Hill of the Republican Party. Thank you for listening to me, and stay safe. And remember that God will help us. I have to say it again. If we help ourselves, do not sit there just watching TV and reading books, thinking it's all going to go away when it won't. If you care about your kids, grandkids, grandkids and future generations, and if you care about yourself, if you're young or middle-aged, rise up before it's too late.